check, check, check. All right, so project, dear doctor. So, Noah, your blood work looks really... <laughs> so, Noah, I want to talk to you oh, about God. your blood oh, because some things are a little funny oh, on no, it. there's a lot of funny things <laughs> on it. What's going on, guys? No, no, just checking in with the lovely Dr. Erica Zelfan. Uh, we are really lucky to have her join us on this channel today because there'd be no other way to get this sort of comprehensive blood work talk to you. So please everyone be ultra respectful and kind in the comments and make her feel welcome. Otherwise, uh, I did that teaser video a week ago which pissed a lot of people off. Apologies. We're going to go ahead and just talk about my blood work, uh, the stuff that more pertains specifically to testosterone placement therapy, and then we'll go ahead and just talk about my blood work in general. So stick around for whatever you would like to be a part of. Thank you for being here and uh, let's find out if some things are going to change, if they're going to stay the same. Let's, let's just get right into it. I'm going to pretend like there aren't three cameras on rear. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Exactly. Great. Great. Okay. Well, let's um let's just go in order of the things I got this stuff in. Sure. So, your blood count, this tells me about your white blood cells, your red blood cells, if your red blood cells have enough hemoglobin hematocrit, pretty much telling me if you're anemic on one end or if on the other end you're polycythemic. What's polycythemic? So that's when um, your hemoglobin and your hematocrit are too high, so your red blood cells are a little too good in a way, and that happens sometimes with guys that are on TRT, which is why I wanted to check that out and see if you had any of that going on. It means your blood can be too thick? Potentially. Is that the layman's yeah. way of thinking yeah. about it? Um, but everything was normal here. That's good. Um, yeah, and your high normal looks like for a red blood cell, right? Yeah. Yep, high normal, but technically still within the normal range. Right. Um, also, just taking a glance at your white blood cells, these are the cells that do your immune system. Mm -hmm. um, make sure that you can fight off infections, you have enough cells to do that, um, and those were well in the normal range. It doesn't look like you have any signs of a current infection or anything like that. Not that we were thinking about that, but it's just kind of nice to double check that. Okay. Um, your platelets are what makes your blood clot or one of the things that contributes to that, and those were normal as well. So all in all, a normal blood count. This test is also called a CBC, or right. a complete blood count. Right, okay. So we had already talked about this, but your metabolic panel was super wonky and weird. And we redid it. So we just went ahead and redid it, because when I saw how weird it was, I went, mm, you know what, maybe lab error, maybe you were dehydrated, maybe it was because the blood draw took so long that I didn't even want to start worrying about anything on there, so we just redid it. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. Oh, hello, you're people were ignoring. still there. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't hear you come in. Um, so we repeated your metabolic panel, and everything looks just fine. Your kidney function looks good. These tests here tell me about your liver fun your liver enzymes. Those look perfectly normal. Okay. Um, your kidneys are filtering just fine. Your electrolytes are in balance. So gold star. Nice metabolic panel. Good job. Made me proud. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and then we sent um, out for your cholesterol panel and your hormone panel. So right. this is where things kind of get interesting. Right. I saw abnormal on the portal for like, yeah. everything. Well, not everything. Not everything. And actually, what I like that this lab does um, is they have a summary page that I'm going to flip to for a second, mm -hmm. where this is what your blood work was like in September, the first column, mm -hmm. and then this is what your blood work was like this month in the follow-up. Um, and overall, there's actually been a lot of improvement That's good. in your cholesterol panel and your That's inflammatory good. markers in your overall cardiovascular risk profile. So even though some things are still in the borderline, they used to be in the red. That's good. Does that make sense? Is that diet-related? It's really hugely diet-related. Yeah. Hugely, yeah. Um, what has not improved and has actually gotten worse is the hormone panel. Right. Um, not that your your body's doing worse, but that you're just over medicated. Right. And we'll talk more about that right. when we when we get there. So when you get a cholesterol panel done at most doctors' offices, this is all that they check is this box. Oh, here. okay. So you know they they often want to know about your total cholesterol. I personally don't really harp too much on this number because it tells me how much bad plus how much good. So oh, if so you have a lot of good cholesterol, that number will be falsely elevated. Got it. Um, so, you know, and yours was borderline, so maybe that means something, maybe it doesn't. But So 214. Mm-hmm. And the range being, 
what is the range? Right there? Two, um, 200, 240? They like to see it under 200. Under 200, okay. Um, there is, I don't know if this is true, but I heard from kind of a, an older, wiser doc that it used to be normal was under 230, mm. and that they lowered the it to 200 it. for the hope of pushing more statin drugs. Oh, okay. I don't know if that's true or not. Conspiracy. Conspiracy theory. Conspiracy I don't day. prescribe statins usually anyway, so okay. it's kind of a moot point for us. But, um, <clears throat> but breaking down of that total, how much is good, how much is bad. So the direct LDLC, this is uh, it gives us a general sense of your bad cholesterol, and that's that was elevated. So your um, direct LDLC, which gives us a general sense of your bad cholesterol, that was one sixty one, which is elevated. And we want to be in the 100 uh, we want to be under 100 be under 100 for that one. Shit. Yeah. So what am I supposed to do about that? We're going to talk about okay. that. Yeah. Um and then your HDL, which is your good cholesterol. I think H is H is happy, so you want it to be high. You want that mm. number to be nice and high. Clever. You're at 44. Is that really bad? It's borderline. I like to see it above 50. Hmm. So what this is telling me is of your total cholesterol which is high. This is high because your bad is high, not because your good is high. Mm. So we have to address that. Yep. Yep. Gotcha. We're 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 already doing things to address it, and we're I'm gonna... saying, like eating as clean as I've ever eaten in my whole life. Exactly. But... So if you look if you look at where you were at in September, all of these values have improved because your good. total in September was two twenty one. I mean, not a huge jump, but it has gone down. Yeah, the bad's your, gone down a little bit. Your bad was one seventy four. It's one sixty one now. Up. The yeah. good has barely gone up. Yep. Yeah. Um, what's always been good is your triglycerides, which is the um, cholesterol that your body makes from sugar. Oh. So oftentimes, people who have you know, pre-diabetes, sure. other blood sugar imbalances, mm -hmm. they'll have a high triglyceride, and your triglycerides are great. They're 75. Um, and I pride myself in my, triglyc my triglycerides. You should, like, put a bumper sticker on I your know, car or something. My triglycerides are fantastic. I should. Yeah. That would be so nerdy. <laughs> And then, like, people like me, all five of us, <laughs> would That's be like, awesome. Good for that guy. <laughs> Good for him. Yeah. Um, Non-HDLC, this is pretty much um, all the cholesterol except for the HDL. So the non-HDLC is all the cholesterol except for the HDL, which is the good HDL. Okay. And that guy is borderline also. You're at 170, and the lab reference range is 130 or The less. danger of these being borderline slash high, worst case scenario, is what? What's the overall risk of it? Why why worry? Well, is it a heart attack? Is it yeah. stroke? Is it yeah. stuff like that? Okay. Yeah. And it's not heart attack or stroke tomorrow. It's, it's you know, if you hang out in this place, for you know, a you're time. A, you're a young guy now, right. you're kind of getting away with it now, but if you if it. you let it go, it's it's a risk factor. Am I talking weird? Is this okay? No, I love the way you're talking. Okay. Yeah, just be yourself. Okay. You were I, yeah. I don't know what am I like? This is hard. <laughs> You are informative and, and smart, but you're also just down to earth. Just okay. mellow. You're okay. doing great. Great. I'll cut all that out. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you got a little something right here, just an eyelash. I do. I'll oh, just drop it on you right now. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, I get to make a wish now. Mm hmm. Cool. Well, Thank I you. thought a bunch of firemen with their shirts off were going to just blow through the door. <laughs> Maybe that's like a 13 year old's wish. Uh, yeah, that's not. <laughs> anyway. Okay, let's continue. I also just want to say overall step back. This is by no means the worst cholesterol panel I've ever seen. Sure. It's not even in the top I don't, 20 I don't see red, so yeah. I'm at least... This is, I would call this a, a moderate. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Lowering bad cholesterol, raising good cholesterol, huge dietary influences there. Right. Huge. I don't doubt. I actually am curious to see what this, what your panel would have been like before the twenty-one day sugar detox you mm, did, and after. That would have been fun. Because I actually have a feeling that you cleaned all of this up within the last month. Oh, I'm sure. Doing I've been eating clean for about. Oh right! Oh, we did this with the sugar. With it, so a yeah. month. Yeah, we did. It, it was like a month. Yeah, yeah it's, I'm really curious about that too. Yeah. Really curious about that too. Yeah, and pe I mean, the kind of rule of thumb is you want to repeat cholesterol panels no more than every three months. Mm. But I actually think it was that three weeks yeah, that, sure. that did a lot of the changes well, that was, here. That was the most extreme thing I've ever done in my life, diet-wise, ever. Yeah. I've never cleaned up my diet to that capacity for that long. You and I'm still it. eating healthier. It's weird. Yeah. It stays weird. Well, when you, when you put in that initial investment, 
you feel the difference, mm-hmm. and then it's not that hard. No, after that. it's definitely not that hard anymore. That's because for feeling sure. cruddy is hard, mm-hmm. and eating vegetables is not that hard. Uh, well, it, <laughs> it takes getting used to yeah. prepping them, not eating yeah. them. Getting used to prepping like quantities enough to fill you up. I feel like that's yeah. been the hardest part. Yeah. Is how to make enough in bulk with enough variety to not get a little mm-hmm. bit like. Uh. But anyway, mm-hmm. let's stay on it. Anyways, you're doing good work, so keep it up. Bless you, Tia. Um, here we have your inflammation tests. So I really like to see inflammatory markers for mm. a few reasons. The big one being is half of all people who have heart attacks have normal cholesterol levels. Interesting. Yeah, which fifty percent is a lot. That's kind of not okay that we're quote that's unquote ha- missing. I was going to say that's like, that's like astounding. <clears throat> yeah. So the medical community is kind of scurrying around, mm. being like WTF? What is this? You what know, does why? WTF stand for? <laughs> <laughs> um, when the uh, frankincense. When the frankincense. Yes. When the frankincense. When the frankincense. Is going frankincense. On. Is going on. I've long since wondered what the kids were doing. Yes. Them. Yep. Thank you. So, so now, now the thought is that that missing piece, that fifty percent, mm-hmm. is inflammation, mm-hmm. um, which is part of why anti-inflammatories are, in every way, shape, and form, becoming more trendy in medicine now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so these tests tell me specifically about inflammation in the heart and in the blood vessels. Mm-hmm. Um, we have an HS CRP. Um, so CRP in general is an inflammatory marker. The HS tells us more about the cardiovascular system. Okay. And that one is great. You're perfect. You're in the green there. Then there's, um, LPPLA2. Mm -hmm. That one promotes vascular inflammation and it also oxidizes the LDL that you have. So the bad cholesterol that you have, it makes it even worse. By so, oxidizing it. Fantastic. That's yeah. great news based on the fact that it's basically high risk. It's... 234 in a range of 200 to 235. Yeah. So yeah. practically high risk for the worst thing to be high risk for. You're going to tell me how to fix this, right? Yes. I'm not going to die on your I'm watch. Not, I'm not going to give you bad news and then kick you out and tell you to never come back. Well, good luck with you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, and leave my practice before you have a heart attack I and know. make my stats I've, look bad. I have a perfect track record <laughs> in your sterling so, young career. So the LPPLA2, that's carried on ApoB. And a- so ApoB, as we talked about, is what penetrates the vessel wall. And that was borderline on you as well. Right. So these two things are connected. Does mm. that make sense? That makes sense. So the cool thing about all of this is if you step in and start nourishing one Imbalance, it'll, it'll, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, it'll domino and help the others. Um, your diabetes tests are great. Uh, no, no real issues Let's there. T- Thank you again. Yeah. Um, your hemoglobin A1C, this tells me an average of the last three months worth of blood sugars. Mm-hmm. So this tells me that you didn't just clean up your diet for a week before your blood test that oh, you know, got for it. the last three months on average, it's been good. Cool. So, um, things that lower bad cholesterol and raise good cholesterol, uh, include things like fish oil, which you're already on. Do I take more or is that not how that works? We might want to talk about your dose. Okay. Do you know how many, I can look it up, but do you know how many grams you're taking right now? I take one tablespoon of the key lime pie. Okay. Okay. (laughs) We might want to bump it up to two. Okay. Um, the exercise, which you're doing, um... Cutting out sugar and carbs, which I'm which doing. you're doing. I mean, I, I eat brown rice, and sweet taters. Yeah. But I'm cutting out all simple carbs. Yeah. Yep. And I miss them. I know. <laughs> Sometimes. I know they are really good. Occasionally. Um, weight reduction, which is sort of happening. Oh, on yeah, its I lost own. 16 pounds in the last nine weeks. So. Wait, say that again. I lost 16 pounds in the last nine weeks. That's awesome. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. I didn't know that. Really? Yeah. Can't see it in my face. Well, I knew that you were looking svelte, but svelte. I didn't realize it was 16 pounds. Yep, 16 pounds. Um, other things that can help with thyroid, um, excuse me, that can help with cholesterol, I just gave out the punchline, is to support the thyroid. Mm. So when your thyroid is low, your cholesterol is going to get high. And we're going to talk about my thyroid later. Or we're going to talk about your thyroid. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Uh-huh. And um, potentially lowering your testosterone dose also. Mm-hmm. Okay. Help with this. I don't know what you're implying there, doctor. 
talks. Well, well, let's just cut to the chase <laughs> yep, here. Let's cut to the chase. Um, let's look at your hormones. <laughs>